In this video, I've gathered some useful tips and tricks, and with the over 2k hours in Blender, I bet some of those will be helpful even for the pros out there. But if you're a beginner, this is a must. So without further ado, let's begin. You know how when you delete a program in Windows, it leaves some files on your PC, something like temp files and other trash. Well, in Blender, it is exactly the same. So when you delete a model, it leaves the material and the textures in the project. And it can increase the Blender file size, increasing the loading speed of the file, and in general, it will affect your Blender performance. And yes, in general use, you wouldn't notice that. But for bigger projects, it can be a problem. So how do you fix it? Well, it's shockingly uncomplicated. Just go to your outliner and switch to unused data. Then press purge. Thank me later. So what if you want to see your light colors in real time? And I don't mean using Eevee, I mean without ever having to enable rendered mode in the viewport. Blender shows lights, but without their color so you can't even preview your lighting setups. But there's an easy fix for that. Go to viewport overlay and enable light colors. Now you can see that little outline for your lights with their color directly in the viewport, giving you a real-time look at your lighting design. By the way, this will be a feature in my add-on, so subscribe to stay tuned for that. Did you know that you can avoid manually setting up the resolution for your renders? Rendering high-res images can take forever, even on the high-end gear, and it is especially important when you're just doing a test render. There's a smarter way to adjust your output resolution without filling with individual dimensions or searching for the exact resolution you need. In the output settings, use the resolution percentage slider. It instantly scales your render resolution up and down. Set it to 50% for a test render or 200% for final render without manually changing the X and Y values. Yes, that's you. Wasting time on setting up your Blender workspace, manually moving panels and windows. But we all need to know how to save ourselves the trouble. While Blender comes with the default workspaces, you may need to personalize it a bit. Creating your own workspace setup can simplify your workflow. Set up panels, settings, tools and shortcuts in a way that makes sense for your project. And save the layout for reuse to save the most important resource, time. Did you know you can make your viewport look way more detailed without ever hitting render? The default solid shading is good, but with cavity shading and shadows enabled, your model will pop with depths and realism, even in the viewport. Look at the difference! But how to set it up? Go into the viewport shading options, enable cavity and shadows. Adjust the settings of cavity to get that nice creased effect on your mesh. Here are two sets I usually make, one to get every detail pop and the other to just keep it subtle. Ever wanted to navigate your Blender scene just like in a video game? Or maybe you just want to key your camera to make it look like real life? Yes, you can do it manually, but there's a simpler way. Go into the viewport tab, press shift plus tilde, usually below the escape button. And now you can control your camera just like in a video game. Use WSD to move around and your mouse to move the camera. And you can even toggle gravity, so it is perfect for testing game environments or real life scenes. Ever wonder why your render time is insanely high for no reason? Even after you already optimized your scene and deleted unused data. It might be hidden geometry, or too much subdivision levels you can't even see from a distance. Even if you don't notice the detail in the final render, Blender is still computing them in the background. So to fix this, go to your render properties, enable simplify and set max sub D to something lower than 6. And then watch your viewport and render times improve drastically without touching individual objects. On that note, we all know that if you want to get rid of some polygons, you can just use the decimate modifier, right? Well, yes, but sometimes it leaves those weird bits and pieces on the model. So how to deal with this? First, you can try to just use merge by distance. It sometimes works better than decimate. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just imagining it. But alternatively, if you already use the decimate modifier and you need to get rid of those loose parts, you can just press F3 and search for delete loose parts. And that should do the trick. Yes, it is annoying to manage hundreds of objects in a dense scene. Manually toggling visibility is painful, 
but Blender has you covered with collections. You can organize and control groups of objects like a pro. And yes, this is really basic, but I see too many people say, oh, I don't need this, I don't use Outliner at all. But let me tell you something, as soon as you will have more than one model in your project, you will need this. And this is also perfect for modeling, because you can have your block out, low and high poly in one project. So to set them up, you can just select all the objects you want in one collection and press M. Then give it a name and you're done. So yeah, that was all for today. If you like this video, like, subscribe and leave your best opinion in the comments. But for now, bye bye.